This episode of After School was written by Einzelgänger. Those who stand on tiptoes do not stand firmly. Those who rush ahead don't get very far. Those who try to outshine others dim their own light. Taoists have long observed that humans often act in counterproductive ways. We frequently force things only to discover that our efforts backfire. We try to improve the world, but then we observe that altering the natural way causes many new problems. Often, the more we strive for something, the more we seem to drift away from it. We may wish to impress someone we're attracted to, but for some reason, the more we try, the less we succeed. Or we're about to deliver a speech we have rehearsed over a hundred times, and even though we know it inside out, we utterly blow it. In such cases, our knowledge and abilities aren't the problem. We know sufficient, we have practiced enough to perform. The problem arrives when we get in our own way. It's the mind that tries too hard to control the situation, to analyze and intellectualize that salts our game. A curious Taoist sage, Lao Tzu, was aware of the human quirk of getting so lost in their intellectual prisons that they forget the natural way. And so they force and strive, swimming against the stream, sometimes ending up further away from their goals than when they started. So what if we stopped trying so hard and found a different, more effortless way of getting things done? This video explores Lao Tzu and the art of not trying. Lao Tzu is the most well-known Taoist sage, although there's no proof that he ever lived. If he did, it should have been somewhere around the 5th and 6th century BC, which makes him a contemporary of Confucius. Nevertheless, the legendary Chinese philosopher wrote a masterpiece called Tao Te Ching, which many consider the primary Taoist scripture. The Tao Te Ching is a mysterious piece of art. Not only is there no consensus on when exactly it was written, but the existence of its author remains disputed. Nevertheless, one thing is sure, the profundity of this work has left its mark on humanity to this day. It's also worth noting that the Tao Te Ching ranks among the most translated works in world literature. Lao Tzu seemed to have written this text as a manual for a ruler. For a significant part, it's about governing people and being a good leader, mainly by letting people govern themselves. It discusses themes like trust and oppression, moderation and excess, and humility and pride. Qualities that make or break you as a ruler, but also as a human. Lao Tzu speaks of the value of trusting, instead of trying to control everyone and everything, taking the lower position instead of trying to dominate, and being flexible instead of rigid. In short poetic phrases, he makes his message clear. He wrote, for example, Those who are stiff and rigid are the disciples of death. Those who are soft and yielding are the disciples of life. The rigid and stiff will be broken. The soft and yielding will overcome. End quote. Yet at the heart of his teachings lies a pivotal concept, the mysterious, all-encompassing force called Tao. The essence of Taoist philosophy is living in harmony with the Tao, also called the Way. So what is the Tao? Lao Tzu clarifies that we cannot know the Tao, at least not intellectually. Our understanding of it only goes as far as the limitations of our perception. The true nature of the Tao remains a mystery. Moreover, according to Lao Tzu, the Tao we speak of isn't the real Tao. Hence, the famous opening of his work goes like this. The Tao that can be described is not the eternal Tao. The name that can be spoken is not the eternal name. End quote. So, if the true Tao always eludes us, what can we actually know about it? The Taoist philosophers emphasize over and over again that the true Tao is an overarching force beyond our comprehension which the senses cannot perceive. The Tao drives everything and governs the universe. It's behind all we perceive, doing its work, never rushing, always getting things done. It's a force of immense depth. We can't control it. We can only move with it or against it. Living in harmony with the Tao is the ultimate goal of a Taoist sage. But how does he pull this off? 
Lao Tzu doesn't provide a practical guide on living in agreement with the Tao. However, his lyrical writings contain many clues that point to achieving stillness of mind, being receptive instead of controlling, and a curious concept known as non-action or effortless action. The latter is quite paradoxical, as not acting and not doing imply passivity. But from a Taoist viewpoint, that's not the case at all. According to Lao Tzu, for those who practice not doing, everything falls into place. So how can we achieve something by not doing? How can we act effortlessly and still get everything done? The answer? Wu Wei. The Chinese concept of Wu Wei or not doing is central to Taoism. It can be translated as non-action, effortless action or the paradoxical action of non-action. Wu Wei is multifaceted. There are different forms of non-action. Lao Tzu's writings embody Wu Wei. He teaches softness over hardness, allowing over forcing and flowing along over striving. He wants us to stop trying so hard, stop pushing beyond nature's limits and use the Tao to our advantage by going along with it instead of fighting it. Practicing Wu Wei aligns us with the Tao. Take for example the idea of non-intervention. Lao Tzu speaks about this concept which particularly applies to the ruler. Instead of ruling by trying to control and dominate, our ruler should trust and allow as many processes as possible without unnecessary intervention. The world and its people are largely self-governing. If he intervenes too much, he disrupts the natural flow and things only worsen. We can also see this with overly controlling managers. Their efforts may stem from a desire to do well, but their constant meddling is often counterproductive. Lao Tzu wrote that great leaders lead from a place of non-action. They only act when necessary. They trust in the process. They let nature do its work. Many problems simply solve themselves. Many things fall into place without intervening. Imagine how much time and energy such an attitude saves. Lao Tzu wrote, Do you want to rule the world and control it? I don't think it can ever be done. The world is a sacred vessel and it cannot be controlled. You will only make it worse if you try. It may slip through your fingers and disappear." End quote. Non-action also shines through when Lao Tzu talks about the futility of fixed knowledge and rigid moral code. We often try to be good based on predetermined ideas of goodness or achieve success as societal standards dictate. But what are goodness and success really? Can we, for example, speak of definitive concepts of good and evil in a complex and ever-changing universe? Trying to impose good on the world often makes things worse. Alan Watts, a fervent scholar of Taoism, once pointed out that the goody-goodies of society are the biggest troublemakers. Their must-save-the-world attitude often disrupts the natural course, simply because they seek to enforce artificial ideas on what's good and evil, which may not align with the nuanced realities of life. Another form of Wu Wei is the idea of effortless action, also called being in the zone, referring to a free-flowing spontaneity during which one merges with the act. Dr. Wu Lin Chong, philosopher and sinologist, explains her interpretation in a Dutch book about Taoist philosophy, emphasizing the element of emptiness or openness. She describes the essence of practicing Wu Wei as follows, and I quote, and so the whole practitioner is able to, from the clarity of his egoless center, observe all relevant forces in a certain situation in their being, undistorted, so that he can respond to them flawlessly." End quote. From this viewpoint, Wu Wei is not just about letting go, going along with the flow of nature, allowing the universe to do its job. It's a much bolder move, for which we need a lot of courage. We must be brave enough to escape our intellectual prisons of assumptions, concepts and categories and engage with the world as it presents itself. The sage must become what Lao Tzu called an uncarved block, which is a simpler, undistorted state of being. As uncarved blocks, we can engage in what Dr. Wei Lin Chong describes as this ultimate receptive and responsive way of action from a crystal clear openness in yourself, one with the breathing of the cosmos. So how does this work in practice? The importance of escaping our intellectual prisons is especially true for effortless action. 
In the flow state, we tend to experience intense and focused concentration on the present moment, loss of reflective self-consciousness, a merging of action and awareness, and even an altered sense of time. It's like the dancer becomes the dance, the poet the poem, and the singer the song. In his biography, retired professional basketball player Bill Russell wrote, It was almost as if we were playing in slow motion. During those spells, I could almost sense how the next play would develop and where the next shot would be taken. End quote. How do we reach this flow state? Perhaps a better question is, what stops us from reaching it? Let's take a look at the word try for a moment. To try means making an attempt or effort to do or accomplish something. Often, it involves particular mental strain, a pressure behind the act. We may worry about our performances, especially when we compete for a prize. We may ruminate about past failures and catastrophize what happens when we screw up. Sometimes we worry so much about a specific task that we can't muster the courage to start, even though we have the capabilities to complete it. Lao Tzu's idea of returning to the uncarved block makes sense here. If we release ourselves from mental strain, and the analysis paralysis that comes with it, we return to a simpler, less contrived state of mind. Free from intellectual burdens, we become more flexible and responsive to reality as it unfolds. But don't take the old sage's word for it. One of the leading experts on the flow state is Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, a psychologist and university professor who wrote a best-selling book named Flow. Mihai states that we often hijack the flow state through what he calls psychic entropy, a state of inner disorder and chaos in the mind. Instead of being focused, our attention is scattered. Instead of operating in the present moment, we're all over the place, lingering in the past, worrying about the future. Instead of action and awareness merging, they are apart from each other, separated by an information overload. In a state of psychic entropy, generally not much gets done and what gets done goes less than smoothly. So again, it's the mind disrupting the natural flow. The creations of the mind, whether worries, ruminations, concepts or ideas, seem to be the main reason we don't act effortlessly. Mastery of the world is achieved by letting things take their natural course, wrote Lao Tzu. But of course, letting go of the reins is hard for a controlling mind. It requires trust, and in trust, there is no trying. You trust or you don't. Thank you for watching this episode of After School. If you like this video, please check out Einzelgänger, a channel dedicated to exploring various topics and ideas.